Good evening and welcome to Irondale High School for our first of what uh, hopes to be many fourth American Legion District games here on CTV Sports. And tonight we have the longtime rivals, Tri-City Red and Tri-City Maroon. This is Tri-City Red's first game. Their first two were rained out. They were scheduled to play the North St. Paul Cavaliers against North St. Paul has two teams. One of them is primarily Hill Murray players. And then on Monday they were scheduled to play Hamlin Red, but that one was rained out as well. So quickly a 2-0 start here to lead off hitter Ryan Nickel, who also had a fine high school season. Also played on the football team. He's gonna be playing baseball at Augustana College next year. That's across for a strike, so it's now three and one. So a leadoff walk is worked by Ryan Nickel. These teams met in the high school season and Irondale persevered to win by a run. Dylan Irving with the complete game victory that day. Also had a beautiful bunt that uh, led to one of the, to the tying run, I believe. And it's fouled off. This is Jeff LeMay, the designated hitter. He is one of the players that uh, graduated from high school last year but due to his age, he's still eligible, eligible to play American Legion ball. He played up at St. Scholastica this year. They had an outstanding season. And two players uh, that used to play for Rosetown, also on that team, Austin and Andrew Colbard. <coughs> Two and one here to LeMay. On deck, the big third baseman, Ross Indelkoffer. We've seen a lot of him over the spring and early summer. Swing and a miss. It gets away from the catcher, Ramirez. And so advancing to second is Nickel. May was not going to punt anyway, but uh, Tri-City Red able to advance the runner. That one's fouled well out of play. The uh, state high school tournament will be starting up very shortly for uh, the 4A, that is at uh, CHS Field. Called strike three. Nice comeback there by Jorgensen. Carter Jorgensen, normally the starting third baseman on the Irondale varsity. I know uh, for certain we have Forest Lake, Champlin Park, Woodbury, Burnsville, Lakeville. Forest Lake. We certainly have two of the best pitchers in the state in the state tourney. Sam Carlson of Burnsville, who was just selected in the second round by the Seattle Mariners last night. That one just missed, one and one. And also Max Meyer, who has just been phenomenal for the Woodbury Royals. He'll be going to the Minnesota Gophers next year. This is very high in the air to center field. We've seen this before. Ranging over is Carson Schicker. Tagging from second is Nickel. He will easily make it into third, but there is two away. Again, uh, center field here is Death Valley. It is the largest dimension I have seen for any ballpark, 428. Eric Holloman rips one foul. 
He is a center fielder today. Again, of the 10 players in the lineup for Tri-City Red, eight played for the Mound Dew Mustangs this past season. That's a similar case with Tri-City Maroon and Irondale since uh, they split ways with Tri-City Red. Pretty much everybody has their own team now, even the private schools, for better or for worse. That one's fouled back. Moundsview made it to the third place game before they were knocked out of the section playoffs. Half swing, the third baseman stumbles, Thunborg, and so advancing and scoring is Nickel, and Holloman will be safe at first. Well, that was unusual. It was not hit very hard. I don't think some Thunborg was expecting it, but he kind of tripped up uh, on his own feet, so they're giving him an error. So no run batted in for Holloman. one nothing here for Red, as this brings up Justin Langer, the first baseman. Tri-City Maroon has played two games already. They are 0-2. Played the... Uh, Tino Grace Club, the Eagles. And then uh, lost to Rosetown on Saturday. Off speed inside, and that hits Langer. So an unusual start to the game is extended. First and second, two away, as they see some nice hustle. This brings up freshman Ian Bond. Uh, saw extensive playing time on the Mounds University. He was a good sized kid for a uh, young man who just finished his uh, freshman year. Now it's fouled out of play. And again, Tri City Red in hosting the State American Legion Tournament. They are automatically entered in the field of 16. That will take place July 28th through July 31st, which is a Monday, actually. I thought that was kind of interesting. Usually you end tournaments on a Sunday. Inside, one and two. So Tri-City Red's uh, clause was certainly helped by getting Nate Fredrickson catcher and Jeff LeMay back this year. Bond still staying alive. It has been very windy over the past few days. Saturday was the windiest I have ever seen. helping out at the Steve Simmons Mosquito Land Senior Softball Tournament. This one is going to get out of play. The skies were actually kind of greenish and that's when you know you could be in trouble as it started hailing and raining pretty hard for about an hour. And then Saturday, it was like the Sahara Desert. In the air to left field, ranging over is Janicek. He will make the play. So Tri-City Red strands two, but they do score one. And we're heading into the bottom of the first. I'll go over the maroon batting order here, leading off as usual, center fielder Carson Schicker. Batting second is right fielder Colin Ward. Batting third, the first baseman Dylan Irving. 
Batting fourth, second baseman Mason Gallagher. Fifth is the left fielder Luke Janicek. Sixth is the shortstop Charlie Saylor. Here we go. Seventh is the DH Eric Osaski. Eighth, the third baseman Nick Thunborg. And the ninth is Kevin Ramirez, the catcher. Carter Jorgensen pitching, and he will not hit today. On the mound for Tri-City Red is Trevor Steffen. He and uh, Matt Larson were two of the primary starters for Mounds View this year. Starting pitchers, I should say. The uh, Twins with an ugly game last night, but uh, were able to make some pretty good draft choices, it appears. The uh, first one, Royce Lewis, is interesting. The common thinking was maybe they would take a 100 mile an hour throwing high schooler, Hunter Green, or a very good right-handed pitcher from Vanderbilt, Kyle Wright, but it kind of threw everybody a curveball, taking a high school shortstop. The prevailing theory is they'll be able to sign him for a little bit less than the slot at 7.7 .7 million. That way you can spend more money on lower round picks. We also got a really good hitting outfielder from uh, Southern Miss. And a uh, pitching prospect out of a high school in Canada, of all things. Here you see the flowing locks of Nate Fredrickson. Shipper was very impressive in center field in the uh, game against Moundsview that we covered in May. Hit sharply to short, Ryan Nickel again with that excellent footwork. The throw is high, but uh, coming back down on the bag in time was Justin Langer. Again, uh, Nickel extremely smooth shortstop as you see there again his lateral movement is excellent and very quick and uh, he made that look pretty easy oh we just missed this is Colin Ward the right fielder that'll even things up the majority of the Maroon players are going to graduate next year, which uh, bodes well for the Irondale team. As they have a lot of talent returning. Take another look here. Yeah, it looks like this foot might have just come back down in time. Again, it's unusual here in that the base paths from home to first and third to home are grass. Carter Jorgensen, Joe Super, Carson Schicker, Colin Ward, they all just finished their sophomore year. So again, the future for Maroon looks very bright. Other games scheduled tonight in fourth district play, the North St. Paul 39ers at White Bear by my good friend Joe Janitsky. And then the other North St. Paul team, the Cavaliers, is at St. Paul Academy against Hamlin Red. I do not know how they decide to uh, divide up the North St. Paul and Hill Murray players if they have a draft or players just choose which team they want to play for. Two away here in the bottom of the first. Hey, there's a Gail Colada sign.
Uh, I believe that Gail Collada uh, does a lot on the computer website end of things for uh, information for Fourth District Baseball, especially Tri-City Red. Steve Grazley, former uh, standout pitcher, is the business manager. Swinging in a mess. There was uh, talk of a 1999 Tri-City Red reunion. That was the team that won the American Legion World Series. Very impressive fashion. And back-to-back -back strikeouts as uh, Trevor Steffen makes quick work of Maroon in the bottom of the first. 1-0 after one. I'd like to thank those of you watching on ctvnorthsuburbs.org and CTV Sports Channel 14. We'll be back after this. As usual, Tri-City Red uh, with a very ambitious schedule. Uh, starting this weekend, they will be playing in four straight weekend tournaments. Uh, starting on Friday, they will be at the Rosemount Woodbat Tournament. And that'll be a three-day tourney. Then is the Burnsville Snake Pit Tournament. That's an interesting name. That is at uh, Alley Magnet, a really nice complex and uh, at the end of June start of July Fargo Moorhead Invitational that'll go over a few days and then the Richfield Carnes Classic and I know Tri-City Maroon they're playing in the Gopher Classic also looks like uh, at the end of June going to be in a tournament in Rochester. And there, uh, oh, some varied competition. First three games against Rochester Redhawks, Gretna, Nebraska, and Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Solid single there for Channing Cole in between short and third. <laughs> so the leadoff man on again here for red in the top of the second as this brings up Nate Fredrickson. He graduated in 2016. I am guessing that uh, as part of the Gopher Classic, there's uh, five games to play, and this is hit well down the right field line. It gets by the right fielder, Ward, and will go for extra bases all the way into the corner. Again, 346 is quite a poke. Uh, I'm a little surprised that Cole did not score on that, but uh, Fredrickson with a booming stand-up double. Take another look at it here as uh, Fredrickson gets into second easily. So as part of the Gopher Classic, you play five, I believe, pool play games. So for Maroon, this is, again, is one of those tournaments that really taxes your pitching. They play Eastview and De Pere, Wisconsin on the 7th, Excelsior and Ham Lake on the 8th, and Elk River on the 9th. And then if you win your bracket, you uh, go on to a championship division. Here is Joey Lawson, the nine hitter. He's playing second base today. 
Hit sharply down the left field line, but foul. the dirt, good step by Ramirez. And as tries to do red, threatening to extend their lead here. Again, I would imagine it is difficult for uh, Red and Maroon fundraising. Red uh, has numerous sources for that, but again, there is no Legion post anymore to speak of. This is crushed to right center field, and that one will also fall in for extra bases. That is gonna score both runners easily, and oh, I'm a little surprised uh, Lawson didn't try for two as that fell in the gap, but two runs batted in for Lawson, and it's now three nothing. Again, uh, I know in high school, I am assuming in Legion Ball it is the same. You can have a courtesy runner, if you like, for the catcher, but in this case, they let Fredrickson run and he scored easily. As there you saw Lawson taking a very long turn to second, but then uh, coming back. That's where your base coach uh, is very helpful. coaching staff for Red this year. Uh, four assistant coaches, Lars Anderson, Scott Becker, Jake Hanselick, and Brett Becker. And then Nick Anderson is the head coach. Steve Raisley was coaching for a while, now again he's the business manager. Three runs and three hits for Red as we're back to the top of the order in the ever dangerous Ryan Nickel. Wyzetta, the defending state champion, will have a chance to defend their title. I believe they received the number one seed. The one that was vaguely surprising, uh, Forest Lake upending Stillwater. Stillwater had an excellent season. Had a sophomore who was one of the best pitchers in the state. But I saw Forest Lake firsthand and uh, they are excellent as well. Champion Park made it out of Moundsview section a very strong season. This is hit again very sharply to right center. Oh boy, that gets by Ward and all the way to the fence. And going for a triple is Ryan Nickel and he will be in safe standing up. You see Ryan Nickel again. Uh, he is a real complete ball player, and this time with a triple as Lawson scores to make it 4 0. And the uh, corner infielder's playing in. This is crunched to very deep center, but again, that's out of a lot of ballparks, but not here. And Schicker again with excellent range tracking it down, but the sacrifice fly works to quickly make it 5 0. So Nickel has already scored twice in an inning and a half. That's pretty impressive. Well, if I had to take a guess, 
the North St. Paul Cavaliers probably have more of the Hill Murray kids since that is where they were playing their home games. Last year they went by Cavalry, this year they're going by the Cavaliers. That one a bit high. This is hit very well to left field, high up and off the top of the fence. And an easy stand up double for big Ross Indelkoffer. Jordan Nelson, who's the Irondale assistant coach, is the head coach for Maroon. There is nobody warming up in the uh, bullpen area yet for Maroon. This might be a case of where one of the position players would come in to relieve when it comes to that. Roll in the dirt, nice stop again by Ramirez. So the inning so far has gone like this. This is the seventh hitter. Uh, Cheney Cole started with a base hit. Nate Fredrickson with a beautiful double down the right field line. Joey Lawson, a base hit to right center to score two. This is high, deep, and again, very high off the fence. In the coffer will stay at third and another Back-to-back -back booming doubles. So second and third, one away for Justin Langer. Is here you're gonna see an excellent replay. And the Carver was set to tag. That's why he only made it to third base. Low. This is hit in between short and third. That time a case of where uh, third baseman playing in, Thunborg, it uh, cuts down on your reaction time and that might have hurt him on that one. So Red has batted around they have scored six in the second. It appears as though we're gonna have a pitching change. Jorgensen is coming off. This looks like Will Life. Is gonna enter the game and Pitching now will be Mason Gallagher. So I am guessing life will go to second and Gallagher will switch from second to pitcher. So I think Will Life will just play the field. Uh, Osaski is still scheduled as the designated hitter. And then Gallagher takes over here. And a uh, difficult scoring line for Carter Jorgensen to say the least. He's still responsible for the runner on first, but he pitches an inning and a third Gives up seven runs 
Six of them earned. One walk, one strikeout. And a whole bunch of hits. As you can see there, you can check out past and previous games on also check out the schedule on www.ctvnorthsuburbs.org. This is hit very sharply to right, ranging in, making a nice play is Colin Ward. So now two away. So this will bring up Shannon Cole for the second time in the inning. Thankfully, I kept enough room for an extra inning. It appears as though the um, State Legion Tournament, when it wraps up on Monday the 31st, <coughs> 10 a.m. is the third place game, and then 1 p.m. is the championship. A little outside. 3-0 here to Shannon Cole, the left fielder. Low in the dirt and an easy walk there for Shannon Cole. First and second, two away. That will bring up Fredrickson, who hit that beautiful double down the right field line earlier on this inning. The 11th hitter for Tri-City Red. Again, uh, fourth district teams are split up into two state subsections when you get to uh, that level. Fredrickson very high in the air. There is Will Life. Life makes the catch. And that'll do it for a, a very elongated second inning as Tri-City Red plate six. Seven runs and seven hits for Tri-City Red. And Maroon still looking for their first base knock. Now that would be something if they got seven runs and two hits. That would mean a whole lot of errors or walks. There we go, thank you guys. Last year, Tri-City Red went 13 and one again in uh, Fourth district play, you play a double round robin. One home and one away against each team. There you see all the fourth district teams. And again, uh, the only one that's really the conglomeration is the two North St. Paul teams. Hill Murray tried having their own team called Maplewood Green, but it did not work out very well. And again, in uh, Substate seven, that is Hamlin Purple, Hamlin Red, Rosetown, and one of the North St. Paul teams. And then an eight is Tri-City Maroon, North St. Paul Cavalry, or the, now the Cavaliers, White Bear Lake. So that's nice in that, uh, in this case, two fourth district teams have a chance to uh, make it to the state tournament. And actually three teams could do it this year if, uh, I don't know how that works. I am assuming 
Tri-City Red, if they win subsection eight, the number two team would probably make it. Unless they don't even play in the sub playoffs since they're automatically in the state tournament. But you would figure that they would want the experience. Past diving third baseman. Good effort there by Endelkoffer. Not the first hit of the game. This time for Mason Gallagher, the new pitcher. Well, I'm looking over the Tri City Red schedule. They do have sub state playoffs planned. So that wouldn't lead me to think that they are playing in it, even though they have automatically qualified for state. City Red in the state tournament will start off at one o'clock against the Substate Two champion. This is now Luke Janicek, the left fielder, regular player on the Irondale baseball team. Also played on last year's Tri City team, I believe, when we uh, covered them out at CHS Field. CHS was the merger of Senex and Harvest States. Nice stop there by Fredrickson behind the dish. Swing and a tip. Nice job by Fredrickson to hang on. Hoping that uh, a little later on in the Legion season, we can cover a game or two over at uh, Rosetown. It is, of course, a beautiful setup there, especially the uh, big hill and Legion overlooking the baseball field. I have very many fond memories of Rosetown. I was a student manager back in my high school days out there, helping out Sam Rockwood. Bruce Carker, among others. Runners going. This is hit to third. Nice play by Endelkoffer. And a very smart move to send the runner Gallagher. He makes it into second. And Endelkoffer's only play was to first. So one away for Charlie Saylor. The Irondale coach, Noah Nessler, is the VFW coach. That is the uh, younger age group than the Legion players. Very high in the air, ranging back is Fredrickson, and that'll fall about four feet beyond him and the fence. Marucci is a newer bat and equipment company that I have not heard too much about. That is rare. Usually, uh, most of those companies are pretty established, like Louisville Slugger, Easton, DeMarini, Worth, and the like. Quickly 0 and 2 here to Sailor. As uh, Trevor Steffen working quickly and efficiently. He's taking a while here. Hit sharply to the picture. Stefan knocks it down. Throw over to first in time. So now two away as Mason Gallagher advances to third.
This is hit foul. Ryan Nickel was the uh, fourth district MVP last year. That is not surprising. He was also named the team MVP. They had five all district choices. Ryan Nickel, Drake Grand, Matt Larson, Jeff LeMay, and Bo Lovedall. Tri-City Maroons MVP was Ryan Schicker. And he was also the uh, all district. Fouled well away by Eric Osaski, the DH. Last year, right around this time, Tri-City Red run ruled Maroon 10-1 in five innings. And then they beat Maroon again here at Irondale in July, 12-3. Hit straight up the middle. A good effort by both the pitcher, Stefan, and the diving second baseman, Lawson. But uh, Maroon does get on the board on the RBI single by Osaski. Hit to third, nice smooth play by Endelkoffer. And that'll do it for the bottom of the second. Maroon does get on the board, however, but they still got a ways to go, trailing 7-1 after two. This is CTV Sports coverage of Fourth District American Legion Summer. Good crowd on hand here for today's game. Not a major league surprise, but um, Tri-City Red has had the last five district MVPs. Started with uh, outstanding pitcher Max Knudsen in 2012. He is now at Nebraska. Sam Hinches also uh, doing very well. I think he's in the Indians minor league system after signing for around $800,000. Ben Mazenga, who's currently with the uh, Golden Gophers. Ranging over is the shortstop Sailor. Throw is in time. Nice job by Charlie Sailor to retire the number nine hitter, Joey Lawson. So this will bring the top of the order in Ryan Nickel. And after Mazinga was Alec Abercrombie. He is playing college ball in North Dakota. The Tri City Red had a very nice run from 1993 to 2000. They won five of eight state championships. Of course, the 1985 St. Paul Jacobson team won the state championship beating Hutchinson 4-3 in Richfield. And Rosetown won the first ever state title back in Recently, Eden Prairie has been on a tear. 
This is it slowly to short. Sailor with a nice play. Throw over is going to be offline. And so hustling on his way to second and out by a mile is Jeff LeMay. Mm. Great job there by Dylan Irving to uh, quickly get the ball and then uh, make a nice strong throw to second as they had LeMay out in plenty of time. But Nickel does advance to third here with two away. Eden Prairie from 2004 to 2013 won seven of 10 state championships. Not too surprising with all the darn kids they have. Swing and a miss. Very nice pitch there by Gallagher. This again is the big uh, third baseman, Russ Endelkoffer. There you see the nice tag out at second. Gail Collada, who's the team administrator and again does a great job with the 4th District website, has a binder over here. Looks to be about the size of the St. Paul Minneapolis phone book. She didn't realize that we were going to be here today, so she's going to put a little update on the website. To let people know they can see a replay of this game. Here is Eric Holloman. He uh, reached on an error in the first and hit, hit a booming double off the fence and scored in the second. As Red would like to reward Ryan Nickel and bring him in from third. A little inside. The Twins have continued their 2017 tradition of being road warriors, but uh, really struggling at home, which is quite unusual. High and foul. So here comes the one two pitch. He throws his bat at it, and a seeing eye single. Again, a nice diving stop by Sailor. But Nichols scores, and an RBI single for Holloman. There's Endelkoffer. Thunders into second. Here's Justin Langer. He was the last batter that starting pitcher Carter Jorgensen faced before they switched to Gallagher. He is one for one, hit by a pitch in the first and a two RBI single in the second. In tune to the six big runs that Red scored in the second. Low in the dirt, nobody will try to move up. Mm, just a little high. So another walk here as the inning keeps going for red. That now loads the bases for Ian Bond. Fly out in the first, line out to medium right in the second. This is something that really hurt Irondale when they played St. Francis was a number of walks, especially late in the game. Looping into right center field, that's gonna drop in for a hit. 
Everybody's moving up. Two runs will score. Langer will end up at third, and it is now 10 to 1. It wasn't very pretty, but it was certainly effective to score two more. Nickel has now scored three runs, Indelkoffer and Holloman each with two. It's sharply to third, very nice play. Throw over, a good scoop by Dylan Irving to save yep, Thumbor's bacon on that one. And that'll do it for the third, but again, three more runs for Tri-City Red. And I see a very nice scoop by Junior Dylan Irving. Again, it was interesting for Moundsview. They had a section playoff game in the afternoon at CHS, and actually that didn't work out too badly because they weren't too far away from Roy Wilkins Auditorium where their graduation was later on that evening. There again you see um, the state American Legion Tournament will primarily be at CHS along with Siebert Field and a couple of other ballparks. July 28th to 31st, we are hoping to uh, cover some games there. Very much looking forward to it. Again, CHS is a beautiful little ballpark. And a significant upgrade over Old Midway Stadium. So bottom of the third we go. Scheduled are the 9-1-2 hitters. This should be Kevin Ramirez, Carson Schicker, and Colin Ward. Again, speaking of new uh, companies into baseball, I was surprised that uh, New Balance is starting to make some spikes. Again, the running shoes are excellent, so it stands to reason they'd make uh, Good athletic uh, footwear. Ramirez lays off that one. Interesting news in uh, local athletic directors as Bob Madison is going to take an associate director's job at the high school leagues and that has opened up Moundsview's position. Jeff Whistler is retiring after this year which was ri widely rumored that uh, he'd probably only be at Roseville for five years or so. Hmm. Well, a laid off walk for Kevin Ramirez. Brings up the leadoff hitter, Carson Schicker. I believe we are going to have a courtesy runner. And we will. This is going to be Cam Miller. Might want to tuck in his jersey. There we go. <laughs> So Carson Schicker batting for the second time, hit a hard grounder between short and third that Ryan Nickel made a very nice play on. Ooh. 
off speed, and uh, Schicker was way ahead of that one. That fastball had some zip on it, but it just missed. All the way. Some players having to go through an awful lot of baseballs here today. And the fans will just throw them back in during a dead time in play. Very high. It was a little surprising that uh, Carlson from Burnsville lasted until uh, the latter part of the second round. High in the air, shallow left center. Ranging in and making the play is Cole. So Carson Schicker, unfortunately, over for 2. That brings up Ward. He struck out in the first. Let's cross for a strike. I'm going to be really happy when these uh, hot, humid days uh, slow down a bit. as though this is going to be the last really muggy one for a while. Hit sharply, and oh boy. Kim Miller uh, certainly could have avoided that one. That would have been an easy base hit and almost a hit and run. And um, instead... You credit Colin Ward with a single. Miller is out, and that will bring up Dylan Irving. At least from this angle, it looked like Miller probably, well, you are looking into the sun, so that part would have been difficult, but. If he held up a little bit, it probably would have been runners on first and third. Nice pitch, low in the zone. Hey, uh, College Baseball World Series is starting up very soon. Something I'd like to go to at some point. Threw it a first, and they almost they have a good play there on Colin Ward. Ten runs on nine hits for Tri-City Red. One run on two hits and two errors for Maroon. Also certainly feels better when uh, the sun goes under a little bit. Yeah, and as you see, once the ball hits the runner, he's automatically out. Because it certainly looked like that was going to go between first and second. Good off-speed pitch and another strikeout for Trevor Steffen. So Irondale threatens but does not score. Tri-City Maroon, excuse me. 10-1 after three. We'll be back shortly.
See a nice American flag and pull right uh, beyond straightaway center field. And again, you see how cavernous it is out there, 428. Mason Gallagher out for his third inning of work. CTV Sports is on uh, Facebook and Twitter. There is John Kimmich. Always oh, does an excellent job as an intern here at CTV. It's one of those days where you kind of feel bad for the umpires having to be out there in this heat. Oh my goodness, I did not notice that. Luke Janicek is, uh, I, I had thought uh, Gallagher was still out there, but uh, Janicek now in on the mound. I did not catch who is in left field. We'll attempt to track that down for you. So Nate Fredrickson is quickly retired. Looks as though Will Life stayed in at second. A little inside. Again, when you're first starting out, you don't need depth as much as you certainly do later on in the year. And again, as in high school, pitching depth is a premium. Especially when you get into tournaments where you're having to play sometimes five or six games in a very short span of time. Right down the pipe, three and one. Twins have Seattle again tonight, led by former twin and traveling suitcase man, Danny Valencia. He's having a pretty good year for them. Yet another walk as Lawson is aboard, and that brings up Nickel again. Last night was rather ugly as uh, catcher Jimenez uh, came in to pick some mop up again. This happens with every major league team, but it especially seems to happen with the Twins to where you have to make a boatload of pitching changes throughout the season between Rochester and the Twins, primarily. Tried a picture from Chattanooga, but that did not work out well at all. This is hit high in the air to deep right center field. Schickler is ranging back, and this will go off the fence. And it looks as though Nickel is going to get another stand-up triple, his second of the day. 
Very nice shot again, this time to right center. So Lawson scores for the second time today. One away, nickel on third. Again, there is a 10 run rule after five innings. And right now we're in the top of the fourth. I was surprised at the uh, high school and youth softball level that it's now an eight run rule after five. Of course, you don't get as much scoring in fast pitch softball as you do in baseball. So you see again, a booming shot to right center by Nickel. He has two walks and two triples. So two and two here to Jeff LeMay. Low off speed pitch, pulled foul. I don't remember offhand how many rounds the Major League Baseball draft goes. I think it might be 50. High in the air, shallow right field. It is caught, taking his nickel. He is not going to go. So that wasn't deep enough to score him. So this will bring up Ross Indelkoffer. Troy City Red has had some, had a plethora of really nice extra base hits tonight. There's a healthy cut at that one. High in the air, deep left center. There's Schicker again, and he will make the play. But Tri-City expands their lead to 10. And you see the maroon dugout. You have a lot of uh, high school kids, parents, relatives. Excellent crowd here today. I know it's turning into a hot but beautiful evening. Hello. I decided to take my hat off. That usually uh, helps keep you a little bit cooler. <laughs> so I'm sorry if uh, my hair is a little slightly messed up. It's also pretty windy out here. We have a new pitcher for red. This is going to be Ben Jepko. So Trevor Steffen goes three innings, gives up two hits, one run, walked one and struck out three. So good abbreviated outing for him. And here is Jepko. Again, Tri-City uh, has 18 players on the roster. That is so cute. I would have loved to have had something like that when I was a very young kid. We have a lot of nice play sets there. And they have uh, 18 players here today. 
So many options for Coach Nick Anderson and company. <laughs> A little house setup. That's really neat. Well, Mason Gallagher is still hitting, even though he is not pitching. Maybe he went to the outfield. That would make sense because Will Life is still in at second. Gallagher scored the lone run for Maroon so far here tonight. Pop up foul. This weekend is uh, one of the biggest adult softball tournaments in the upper Midwest, the Dudley Budweiser Classic. That is out in Brooklyn Center. I have a Hall of Fame game on Thursday that I think I'm going to be attending. I know many of the players out there. A lot of them played in our uh, Steve Simmons tournament over the weekend. Mostly in either the 50, 55, or 60 and over divisions. Minnesota did have a 75 and over team and an 80 years and over team. The pitcher for that team, Dick Anderson, I believe is either 85 or 86. He's still in excellent shape. All the way. One thing in these weather conditions, you find you need a lot of things to use as paperweights, ranging in from center field. And making the play is Eric Holloman. Again, in these games, especially when the teams are incredibly familiar with each other, they aren't quite as good as announcing uh, substitutions to everybody. Throw it right back in to catcher Nate Fredrickson. believe most Legion teams still go with the diamond baseball. It's comparable to uh, the Rawlings. Nice diving effort by the second baseman Lawson, but he can't come up with it. So a hit for Charlie Sailor Boy. This will bring up Eric Osaski, who has knocked in the only run of the day for Maroon. So there you see a very nice replay. Low inside in the dirt, easily going to second will be Sailor. I don't know if exactly I'd be so vocal being down by 10, but uh, what the heck.
swing and a miss and a high fastball. Yes, this is Eric Osaski. Just low. Side. I guess I was a little surprised they took out uh, Stefan. He hadn't thrown many pitches. Again, this uh, is one of those moves to save him for maybe later on in the week. Chopper off the ground. Nickel had to double pump, but still uh, plenty of time to get the out at first base. That'll do it for the bottom of the fourth. One hit, one man left on. Top of five, and uh, threatening to have a run roll here. Ten run lead for Tri-City Red. Well, Janicek is still on the mound. Mason Gallagher is now at short. We have a new first baseman as well, Ben Ostland. It appears as though the outfielders are still the same. And Eric Holloman, who has reached three times on an error, a double, and an RBI single. We'll lead things off. I like how uh, both Tri-Cities have gone with the uh, Twins TC logo. Ooh, bad hop. Uh, I would definitely give a hit there to uh, Holloman. That's just uh, my opinion. Uh, took a really bad bounce and instead of staying down and hopped up into the chest of Thunborg. Well, they're giving him an error. That's a little surprising. Nice one across for a strike. This is Justin Langer. Throw to first, gets by the first baseman. And so ranging over is the right fielder to uh, relay it back in. Column Ward switched from right to left. Of course, Janicek went from left to pitcher. This is Janicek's second out inning of work. That one a little high.
One thing I've been seeing more and more in baseball and softball, and I've got to track one down, I think they're still around, is those slightly larger pens that uh, have four different colors of ink. Those come in handy in a deal like this. That bounces off of Colin Ward. <coughs> and so going into second is Langer. So I guess I might call that a hit and an error. As we'll take another look at it here. And Ward had trouble with it. Yeah, that's what they're doing, hitting it in an error. So this brings up Ian Bond. He is one for three with two runs batted in. I don't know if the uh, coaches are required to wear full uniforms. Of course, they are in Major League Baseball. It's interesting, Connie Mack, who uh, managed in Philadelphia for, I think, 50 years. He always wore a suit and a tie. Figure in a Philadelphia summer that would get mighty uncomfortable. Low in the dirt by Ramirez. And strolling into third is Langer on the wild pitch. And the Twins uh, still in first place in the division. But again, the, it's always difficult finding starting pitching besides Bigger Santana and Jose Barrios. The rest of the starting rotation has really been a jigsaw puzzle. Trying to find the pieces that fit. Phil Hughes is still out. He has some tingling in his hand. We have not diagnosed that yet. All right, good off speed pitch, just missed. And uh, why am I drawing? Oh, Glenn Perkins. Uh, he's supposed to throw a simulated start down at Fort Myers. Beautiful single there, right between first and second. Second hit for Bond. Second run batted in. First time Langer has scored. And it's now 13 to 1. The only player who has not scored for Tri-City Red is the number two man, Jeff LeMay. One thing that I thought that was really neat, uh, it looks as low, this is going to be Ichiro Suzuki, Suzuki's last season. And in interleague play, Miami played at Safe Crow Field and he hit a home run, much to the, the delight of the fans. They all still, of course, love him in the Pacific Northwest for good reason. We had an interesting situation in our senior softball tournament. They have a rule for excessive wind to where uh, only strikes count. So you, you don't walk as a hitter. It's either a hit and out or a strikeout. Hit sharply to short, under, oh boy. Bad idea there, the uh, underhand flip to second. And so, Bond to second, Cole reaches on the air. Number five, 
for Maroon as the wind is picking up a little bit. Tri City Maroon could use a lot of wind in their sails right now. They're kind of dead in the water, unfortunately. Foul tip. Nice job by Ramirez. Nate Fredrickson. He did not play any college ball uh, here this past spring. But he still looks to be in excellent shape. That was an awkward looking swing. We had explored the possibility of covering some Tri-City Red games at their home field, Mounds View, but just uh, where it is located is not very uh, conducive for mobile production van cable television coverage. But uh, Rosetown is nice. This is a very nice setup here at Irondale as well. Ow. Joey Lawson, the second man to be hit by a pitch. That'll load the bases for, again, Ryan Nickel. Then for the fifth time already. And we're going to have a little powwow on the mound. Again, last year, Fourth District had the uh, two dates at CHS that we covered, five games in two days, which was an absolute treat. But as far as I can tell, all of the uh, Fourth District games this year will be at the home fields. Nice pitch on the outside corner. I dare say Gail Collada might be the most popular person here. Low by Ramirez. All the runners will advance. I would call that one more of a passed ball. Second and third, one away. It is now 14 to one. I know in baseball they expanded the rule to uh, 15 runs after four innings. I do not know if they've done that in Legion ball. I guess I'd be a little surprised if they had done that. All the way by Nickel. Last year in Substate 7, Hamlin Purple came back and beat Oakdale in the championship. And then in Substate 8, Tri City Red came in third, being knocked out by Forest Lake. And then the Rangers beat Stillwater in the championship, 3 to 1. They have been a big time thorn in the ponies' side. With Legion Ball as well. Hot shot up the middle under the glove of life. As Nickel has reached all five times. And his third run batted in of the night. No surprise of that uh, 1999 team 
Billy Schneider was the uh, fourth district MVP in 99, Steve Grazley in 2000. In that 99 season, Steve only banded, I think, like five times. He was uh, DH'd for, again, uh, that was a year where Mountview and Irondale had still merged on Tri-City Red. And Red had a big time first baseman slash DH by the name of Brian Paoni. That one goes sharply to the gap and makes it 16 to one. Maroon has made multiple changes throughout the game. The only one, to my knowledge, that Red has done was putting in the new pitcher, Ben Jipko. Fouled away. Last year, the state tournament was in Delano, and the year before that was Chanhassen. That must have been fun when it was in uh, Dundas and Northfield. Dundas has a really nice little town ballpark. The one I really liked uh, was in Jordan called the Minimet. They had a slow pitch softball World Series out there. That I had the pleasure of working at. Fouled away again by Russ Indelkoffer. It's one for three with a double and a walk. Just inside. So the count is full. Hit to third, nice play there. Throw over in time. So two away. And for the second time, Tri-City has batted all the way around. Eric Holloman will bat for the second time this inning. By comparison, Tri-City Red has now batted around four and a half times. And Maroon uh, hasn't even batted around twice yet. Popped up high in the air. Shortstop is ranging back and he will make the play. But Tri-City Maroon has a uh, hill the size of Mount Everest to climb. They need to score at least six to stay in the game here in the fifth. 16 runs and 14 hits for the Big Red Machine. I was hearing voices in my head that uh, I think this might be a little payback from when Irondale beat Mounds View in a non-conference ball not too long ago. And I think he might be right. The wind has picked up considerably. But uh, unfortunately for Maroon, it's kind of uh, blowing mostly in. <laughs> That's a better view of me. <laughs> this uh, cooling towel helps a little bit. It, it's more to keep the sun off uh, the back of your neck. 
again, that's a really nice camera shot on the hill overlooking the uh, visitor's dugout. Here is Nick Thunborg. He grounded out third to first in the second. Low. As uh, Jepko out there for his second inning at work. A rare mistake. Giving him a hit. Let's take another look at this. I don't know if we'll get to see it go out to nickel or not. No, that's okay. Hello. This is the catcher, Kevin Ramirez. Not very often you uh, see the catcher batting ninth. Hit sharply down the third baseline for a fair ball. Nice shot there by Ramirez. So for the first time today, Maroon has uh, the first two men on, nobody out. And, and this will bring up the new leadoff hitter, Dan Swanson. Okay, uh, we've got a little confusion here. Number 12, Cameron Miller. Ah, Cameron Miller is going to hit. Uh, I'm glad they got that figured out. That one's fouled well away. So it looks as though Dan Swanson will be in for Charlie Saylor if we get that far. Hit right to the pitcher. To nickel for one to first overthrown. So Maroon avoids the double play. Good uh, slide into second. That might have been part of it. Also, the throw from Jepko was a little high. Might have thrown off Nichols' timing a little. High and foul. Low and inside. Slowly to nickel, flip to second for one, on to first. Double play, and that will do it for the ball game today. Nice job there. Nickel to Lawson to Langer. So final totals here, 16 big runs for Tri-City Red, six in the second, three in the third, five in the fifth to really finalize things, 14 hits, one error, and Tri-City Maroon, one run on five hits and uh, five errors, again, also a few too many walks, but uh, Tri-City Maroon had this game uh, from the get-go. Uh, there's an old saying, it was close to they played the national anthem, but uh, in this case, they didn't play the national anthem. <laughs> but uh, Tri-City Red wins their first game of, I'm sure, will be many 
on the season, and Tri-City Maroon unfortunately falls 2-0 oh, and 3. I'd like to uh, sincerely thank our crew and Dale Irving tonight for uh, a great broadcast here at a nice ballpark in Irondale in New Brighton. Uh, we are hoping to have Rosetown Tri-City Baseball at the Rosetown American Legion for you next Wednesday, but a uh, tough one tonight for Maroon as uh, Tri-City Red really had their sh hidden shoes on all the way throughout the game in tune to a 15-run victory. Good night, everybody.